This is the video instructions for installing wood porch balustrades from Western Spindle. These instructions apply to both our 4 inch and 6 inch rail systems and all sizes of spindles and balusters. You also want to take our printed installation instructions with you to the job site. The printed version is available on our website where you can download the PDF and print it and in our catalog which will be shipped with your order. For polyurethane balustrades, see our poly installation instructions. We recommend using Western Spindle's Newell Installation Kit and Rail Installation Kit. For this video, we'll assume you're using these hardware kits, which will make the installation easier, more efficient, and with better results. If you choose to use your own hardware, you may need to make adjustments to these procedures according to your situation. Also note that our products are shipped to all different kinds of jobs all over North America, so we can't account for every different situation that may arise. Ultimately, the installer must be responsible for determining the best method for their particular situation. We highly recommend all wood products be primed. If you don't want to do this, we offer factory priming as an option directly from our shop, which means you can start installation right away when the order arrives, instead of starting a priming project. We use a high-quality primer sprayed on all surfaces, including the ends, which are often the most important to prime. Let's start by installing the newel posts. Mark the center location of all the posts on your porch floor or decking. Now fasten the anchor plate from your newel installation kit to your flooring. For a wood floor, we recommend you have at least 3 inches of wood to bolt to, for example, two layers of 2x6s. This may mean adding blocking under the floor. It's better to bolt through the floor than to simply lag into it, so drill four holes all the way through the floor. Use at least quarter inch holes and bolts for this purpose. For a concrete floor, pre-drill the four holes with a masonry bit and a hammer drill. Fasten the plate with masonry legs. Next, install the threaded rod from your newel installation kit into the anchor plate and snug it down with pliers. Place the newel post over the threaded rod. Now put the top channel over the rod and down into the recess on the top of the newel with the open side up. Place the lock washer on first, then the nut, and tighten. The cap goes on last with the help of brad nails or construction adhesive. Unless you're one of those people that does everything perfectly the first time, it's probably wise to wait to secure the post cap until the rest of your balustrade is installed, just in case you need to make adjustments. With your newel posts installed, you're ready to install the rail and spindles or balusters. Again, for easiest installation and best results, use the rail installation kit. One kit will install all the components of one section of rail and spindles. The kit includes all the appropriate size brackets, screws, and bits for our porch rail systems. First, we'll measure the distance between the posts and cut the rail sections to length. Now, in the next few steps, we'll show you how to better hide the brackets by making them flush. You can skip these next few steps for a simpler installation. So, here we go. Rabbit the underside of the subrail ends so that the bracket fits flush on each end as shown here. If you're installing our four-piece system, do the same to the bottom of the skirt. If you're using our three-piece system, which doesn't include the skirt, then you'll mortise the underside of the bottom rail. Note that with the six-inch three-piece porch rail system, you will need to mortise a notch in the bottom rail because a bracket is narrower than the rail itself. On the four-inch rail system, the bottom rail is only slightly bigger than the bracket, so you will not want to try to mortise the bottom. The edges could split. So, for the 4-inch 3-piece system, you'll simply place the bottom rail on the bracket without the mortise. You can make these rabbits and mortises with a chisel or router. Now again, if you want an easier and simpler installation, you can skip the rabbit and mortise step and simply place the rail sections on the brackets. In a lot of installations, the brackets will hardly be noticeable once it's painted and you're standing next to it. Next, we'll install the brackets on the newel posts. Locate where the top and bottom brackets will be on the newel post. Remember, the top brackets are located at the bottom of the subrail. And again, the bottom brackets are located at the bottom of the skirt on the four-piece system, or at the bottom of the bottom rail on the three-piece system. The short leg of the bracket goes against the newel post, with the long leg sticking out. Mark the outline of the bracket on the newel, and mortise the newel so that the small leg of the brackets are inset and flush with the surface of the newel post. Again, you can use a chisel or router for this. Now screw the brackets to the newel post using the one and a quarter inch screws found in your rail installation kit. 
Note that this method allows the rail to cover the short leg of the bracket when installed, making them basically invisible. One exception to this is with the bottom side of the stair rail brackets. In that case, the brackets at the bottom of the stairs will have the short leg of the bracket pointing down. We do this because if we make the bracket with the leg pointing up, the tight angle is too difficult to screw to the newel post. A quick note here about attaching to round columns. If you're mounting the rail onto round columns, then obviously the preceding method described won't work. So, we've developed a rail to column kit with modified brackets and a little bit different installation method. The rail to column hardware kit is an optional or additional kit that has eight narrow brackets and toggle bolts. In this case also, you'll have the short leg of the bracket pointing down below the rails as shown here. Your rail to column kit will have additional instructions, pictures, and tips included for this situation. Now it's time to install your spindles on your rails. First, you'll need to decide on spindle spacing. Most codes dictate that this spacing must follow the 4-inch ball rule, which is to say a 4-inch ball cannot pass between them at their narrowest portion. Spacing guidelines for each of our standard spindles and balusters are listed for each product on our website. It's also shown in the printed catalog, which is included with your order. Using the maximum spacing as a guideline, determine the spacing that provides a consistent look and spaces at the ends of each rail section. It may be necessary to vary your spacing slightly between sections depending on your rail length. For those of us that might be a little rusty on our finished carpentry math, the easiest way is to download a free baluster spacing app on your smartphone. Just search baluster spacing in whatever app store you use. Now mark the centers of the spindles on your subrails. As you get started, you might find it saves time if you cut a simple spacer to place between each spindle or baluster as you go. Install your subrail on the top of your spindles or balusters using the two and a quarter inch screws in your rail installation kit. For the larger two and a half or three and a half inch spindles, two screws in each end should be used. Now turn the assembly upside down. Install the bottom rail onto the spindles the same way you just did with the subrail, again using multiple two and a quarter inch screws for each spindle. If you have the three-piece system, you're ready to install your rail on the newel posts. If you have the four-piece system, fasten the skirt to the underside of your bottom rail now using the four and a half inch screws found in your rail installation kit. We recommend drilling pilot holes to prevent splitting the skirt. Now, turn the rail assembly right side up again and place it onto the brackets already installed on the newel posts. Put on the top rail. Screw all the brackets to the rail system from the bottom up using the two and a quarter inch screws included in your rail installation kit. Note that for the three piece system, you'll want to use the shorter one and a quarter inch screws on the bottom brackets, otherwise you'll screw all the way through the bottom rail. Almost done. Final painting should be completed after installation using a good exterior paint. We recommend consulting a professional paint store for the best paint products and advice. And you're done. Make yourself a refreshing beverage, pat yourself on the back for a job well done. And we love to see pictures of projects. Send your pictures and a glowing testimonial to info at westernspindle.com. If you have any questions during your project from materials to installation, please don't hesitate to call one of our professionals at 888-459-9965. Thank you for being another great Western Spindle customer.